This is video 25 in our series Topics in Tensor Analysis. In uh, this video we're going to try to wind up our discussion on uh, concerning covariant differentiation of vectors. A reminder that the playlist for all the videos is at the website digital-university.org. Okay, let's say that we have a vector that is expressed in terms of its uh, contravariant components. And we want to take the derivative of the vector with respect to each of the curvilinear coordinate axis. Remember how this is set up now. Here is a just a generalized curvilinear coordinate system with axis u1, u2, u3. We could have more of them if we wanted to. Here is some vector a, and now we're going to take the derivative of the vector with respect to each one of the coordinate axis. And again, we've been doing this in the past videos, uh, videos 22, 23, and 24. But let's just look at the right-hand side of the equation and just treat this like a product. So here we'll hold this constant and take this derivative. So we're taking the partial derivatives of the components of the vector with respect to the coordinate axis. Then we will hold this constant and take these partial derivatives. Take the partial derivatives of the tangential vectors with respect to the coordinate axis. And this, of course, we can write, as we did in video number 17, as a Gustafel symbol. So let's do that. This will stay the same. So we have this expression and now we're going to write a Christoffel symbol in place of this so we have gamma i j and then we need another tangential vector with the repeated index upper and lower let's call it k now the question is this right-hand side of the expression, is this a tensor? Well, before we answer that, let's take a look at this term here. Because we have a repeated index here, as we're supposed to have with a Christoffel symbol. But we have another repeated index here. And, of course, repeated indexes, upper and lower, means that we sum over them. It also means that uh, sometimes they're called dummy indexes because it doesn't matter what the letters are, it still means we're going to sum over them. So we could call this VL gamma L J K E K. And this would have exactly the same meaning as this. Here we're summing over the I's for i equal 1, then i equal 2, and so forth. Now we're summing here where l equals 1, then l equals 2, and so forth. So it means exactly the same thing. Well, we bring this to your attention because here we have tangential vector ei. Here we have tangential vector ek. But it's a repeated index. So if we could put the i label on here, then we could factor these out. And we can do that because we could call this i, have repeated index i, then here have repeated index k, and it would mean exactly the same thing. Here this is k. This is k. And now this has the repeated label i. This 
and this give us exactly the same expression. The k's vary from 1, then 2, then 3. The i's vary from 1, 2, 3. These go from 1, then 2, then 3, and so forth. Well, these go from 1 to 2 to 3, and so forth. So we can replace this expression with these repeated indexes. So this is k. k. And make the i's the repeated indexes over here. Now we can factor out these tangential vectors EI. And we have then it looks like this. Now the question is, again, this right-hand side, is it a tensor? Well, in the previous videos, in 22, 23, and 24, we have shown that these partial derivatives are the components of a vector. They do not transform like a tensor. Here we have a Gustafo symbol. In video 21, we demonstrated these do not transform the way the components of a vector transform. What happens though is that if you add these together then they do transform the way that the components of a mixed second order tensor transform. And it's rather lengthy to show that so we'll have to do it in a separate video. But what that means is that this right hand side of the equation in fact is a tensor. So if we modify the differentiation of a vector to include not just the derivatives of the components of the vector, but to include this extra term, then when you differentiate, you indeed do get um, another tensor that arises from that. So this process where we take the partial derivatives of the vector plus add this term, this is called covariant differentiation. Meaning again that for covariant differentiation, you not only take the derivatives of the components of the vector, but you add these terms to it, that is called covariant differentiation. And the reason why it's done is that according to this formula then, when you take the derivatives of a, when you take the derivative of a vector, according to this formula, you in turn get a tensor that results from that. And again, we will formally show in a future video that yes, this, these components added together do behave the way the components of a mixed second order tensor behave. So this is what is involved here in the concept of covariant differentiation. Not only taking derivatives of the components of the vector, but adding this term to it. So that when you do that, what results is a mixed second order tensor. So that means that you can have a vector or a tensor expressed with co contravariant components, do the differentiation to include this term, and you will get another tensor that comes out of that. Now, if we are in Cartesian coordinates, then the Christoffel symbol is zero. So for Cartesian coordinates, all you have to do is take the partial derivatives of the components of a vector, and you will get a tensor that comes out of that. Now, for Cartesian coordinates, we said the Christoffel symbol is zero. 
that's um, pretty straightforward to show. Remember, here is a Cartesian coordinate system with coordinates x1, x2, x3. We'll just do this in three dimensions now. And Cartesian, or here's our unit vector, e underline 1 hat, our other unit vector, and the third unit vector. So the position vector in Cartesian coordinates can be written simply like this. Now, here's our position vector. And remember that from video 17, when we introduced the uh, concept of uh, uh, Christoffel symbols, essentially what we were doing was taking the second derivative of the position vector with respect to two different curvilinear coordinate axes. Well, in Cartesian coordinates, our axes are just x1, x2, and x3. So let's take the first derivative of the position vector with respect to each one of the Cartesian coordinate axes. So here it is. So take the, take the partial derivative of r with respect to x1. That's just going to give us this unit vector. Take the partial derivative of the position vector with respect to x2. It gives us this other unit vector, and so forth. Well, now when we take the second derivative, that means then taking partial derivatives of these unit vectors. That, of course, is going to be 0. So in Cartesian coordinates, the Christoffel symbol is 0. So the expression that we had was like this. This equals the partial derivatives of the components of the vector. Then we had this. In Cartesian coordinates, that's 0. So in Cartesian coordinates, all we have to do is take the partial derivatives of the components of the vector. And alas, we do get a second order tensor that results from that. Now remember, this was derived from the contravariant components of a vector. What happens then if we express the vector in terms of its covariant components? So we have it like this. Well, we had shown now, it was back in video 17, when we introduced the concept of Christoffel symbols, we had this equation, taking the partial derivatives of the tangential vectors with respect to each one of the curvilinear coordinate axes. Remember from our earlier videos on reciprocal basis, each tangential vector also has an orthogonal vector associated with it. So what happens if we take the partial derivative of this with respect to a coordinate axis? And that's it we have written right here. This is one of the orthogonal vectors taking this partial derivative. Now we get this expression. And we haven't derived this yet, so we'll have to do that in a future video. For now, what this means is that if a vector is expressed in terms of its covariant components and you differentiate it, you get this expression. And what we can show in a future video is that, yes, together these form the components of a second order mixed tensor, so that when you have a vector expressed in terms of covariant components, and you modify the differentiation process, 
so that we differentiate not only the components of the vector, but include this term, then a tensor will result from that. So this is how the differentiation process has to be modified when the vector is expressed in terms of its covariant components. For contravariant components, it has to be like this. Okay, and that really then kind of wraps it up for what we want to say at this point concerning um, covariant differentiation of vectors. Just some um, loose ends that we'll have to take care of in, the, in future videos. We had stated previously that when you have Cartesian coordinates, contravariant components and covariant components, um, they're the same thing. So that in Cartesian coordinates, we just simply speak of the components of a vector or the components of a tensor. And we haven't formally proven that to be true, so we'll have to do that in a future video. And then also in future videos showing that together these transform according to the components of a second order mixed tensor. Likewise, so do these. And we'll prove that in a future video. And then this was from video 17. We have not yet shown is why this equation is true. So we will do that in a future video. Then when we kind of get these loose ends wrapped up, I think we'll have the basis then where we can start um, using tensors and start solving specific problems with them. So come back and join us for those videos, and then we'll continue along here with our discussions.